Okay. Cheryl, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Good morning. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Before we get started, I just want you to know that this is our third time trying to um, record this teaching. So um, I know that the, uh, the enemy, the devil is upset because he has tried to cut off my connections uh, two or three times now. But guess what? Where God has purpose and plan, it always prevails. Whatever God purpose and plan, it always prevails. So I am here and we are just going to just start from the beginning. So I thank those of you who have returned to listen in. Please be in prayer with me, believing that this time we can get everything on one um, setting, get everything recorded in one video so that it will be more convenient for you as you go back and watch it. But I will not stop. I am going to continue on in what God has called me here to do today. And what I'm going to do is we're going to pray first <laughs> before we get started. We are going to talk today. I'm going to pray for parents and children today. Because when I woke up this morning, God placed this on my heart as a necessity. He wants me to pray today for parents and children alike. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go over a few scriptures first. And then we are going to stand in agreement together as I pray and petition God concerning this matter parents, and children. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now, O oh God. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be a part of this day that you have made for us. Father, we are so grateful to you, never to take anything for granted, O oh God, that you have brought before us this day. Father, thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you, God, for your great compassion towards us. Thank you for your goodness and faithfulness in this day, O oh God, and the new mercies that you have made available to us. For, Lord, we truly need new mercies each and every day. Father, we thank you that you have already gone before us in this day, Lord God, to make the crooked places straight and to make our path plain. Father, help us to walk in the path that you have laid for us today, O oh God. Hallelujah. Order our steps, O oh God, with your word and your Holy Spirit. Father, help us to walk, O oh God, with you, O oh God. And Father, help us to follow you, Lord Jesus, and your leadership and lordship in our lives on today, O oh God. Father, in all that we do today in word and in deed, O oh God, and in tongue. Father, you be glorified and you be magnified in our lives, in our works, and in the earth, O oh God. Father, we ask today that you would just renew us through the spirit of our mind today, O oh God. Renew us through the spirit of our mind on today, O oh God. And Father, we just ask that you would purge us from all unrighteousness, O oh God. Anything that's unholy in our lives, O oh God, Father, cleanse us and purge us with hyssop so that we may be white as snow. Father, search our heart, mind, and ways today, O oh God. And Father, whatever you find in us that's not like you, deliver us and lead us into the way of everlasting life, O oh God, the way of holiness, righteousness, and in truth. Father, today we just ask that you would just be with us, O oh God, in this hour as we partake your word, as you speak to our heart, speak to our mind and soul and spirit, O oh God. Father, we come to you today with listening ears. We come to you in confident expectation on today, O oh God. We are believing you for a word and we are ready to receive, oh God, your word today with humility, with gladness and in meekness and joy, oh God, on today. Father, I decrease. I decrease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you, God. Father, I decrease that you may increase and that you, God, May have your way, Lord. God, let it be none of me, but all of you. Let it be all of you, God. Let it be you who we see in here today and in this hour. As I minister to your people, as I minister to the parents, and as I pray for them, and I pray for their children. Father, I thank you today that your word shall not return void. 
but that it would accomplish everything that you send it forth to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I am your servant, Lord. And I am your vessel. And I pray today, Lord God, as, as, as I minister and encourage your people, that you will do a great work, oh God, in them, that they will be encouraged today. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Parenting. I oftentimes hear people say it doesn't come with a manual, but it does come with a manual. Everything that pertains to our lives has a solution from God, an answer from God, a remedy from God. Everything we have, everything we need is in the word of God. It's in the word of God. So I'm here to tell you today that it does come with a manual. And in a time that we're living in right now, we must be vigilant. We must be persistent. The Bible says that our adversary, the devil, walk around as a roaring lion, seeking, seeking whom he can devour. And I'm here to encourage you today to be alert, to keep a careful watch over your home or your household, over your children, especially your children, especially your children. Keep a careful watch a close eye on your children. Be like a mother hen watching over her baby chicks. I don't care how old your children are. You keep a careful watch over your children. The enemy is seeking whom he can devour, including your children. I am here to encourage you parents today to pray for your children. To open up the word of God. Because God has given you instructions. He has given you guidance. He has given you knowledge and truth on how to raise your children, how to protect your children. And today we are going to pray. We're going to pray for the parents and we're going to pray for the children. And we are going to seek the Lord and we are going to search the scriptures concerning our children. You have authority over the enemy. You have authority in the lives of your children, especially those who are of age, who are at the young and tender age living in your household. And even if they're off in college, even if they're off living their own lives, you still have spiritual authority. You can still speak the word of God into your children's life. You can still speak the word of God over your children's life. And if they have gone wayward, wayward, if they have gone prodigal, you can speak life and you can decree what God has already declared concerning your children and God will return them back to you. Hallelujah. They will turn back to God. All hope is not lost. We have hope. Jesus is our hope. And God has made a promise to us concerning our children. Hold on to the promises of God concerning your children, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it sounds like. God is still in control and God is true to his promises. He is true to his word concerning you and concerning your children. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There are so many parents right now who are discouraged. So many parents thinking that they are failing. But I am here today with the word from the Lord that's going to lift your countenance. It's going to lift your confidence. And it's going to lift your faith. You have hope. You have answers and it is all found in the word of God. It is time for you to stop looking to man, to, but for you to start looking to the author and finisher of your faith, Jesus Christ himself. It is time for you to start looking to the hill from where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord. God has a solution. He has an answer to your problems.
and for you and your children. And so we are going to look into the word of God today. And we are going to leave this hour encouraged in the Lord, knowing that God will fulfill his promises concerning our children. We are not without hope because Jesus is our hope. I don't care what your child is doing. I don't care what your child is saying. I'm here to give you a new strategy, a divine strategy from the Lord to use against the enemy concerning your children. We have weapons. It is time for you to pull out your weapons and start using your weapons. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. If it's drug addiction in your child's life, if it's disobedient and rebellion in your child's life, whatever the stronghold may be in your child's life, you have the ability and you have the authority from God to pull down every stronghold Hold every demonic force that has come against your child, your family, your marriage. You have the ability and you have the authority. I'm here to charge you today to pull at your weapons that God has given you. It is time for war. We are in a spiritual warfare. And the only way we can win a spiritual battle is with spiritual weapons. My God, you cannot win a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. The only way that you will win and have victory in a spiritual battle is with spiritual weapons. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but against spiritual wickedness. The rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. It is time for you to pull out your weapons. And start swinging on the devil. When the Satan confronted Jesus after he had been fasting and praying for 40 days, the Bible says that Jesus used the word of God. He said three times, it is written, it is written, it is written. And the Bible says the, the, the devil, he fled from Jesus and angels came and ministered to him. You have one of the greatest weapons in the whole entire world and it is the word of God. And it is time that you use your weapons. If you want the devil to flee from you, if you want him to flee from your, from your children, then you must speak the word of God. It is a powerful weapon. Use your weapon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to now go to the scripture and see what the word of God says to us concerning our children. We are going to go to the word. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talents. This is the Amplified. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. When you train your child up in the way of righteousness, holiness, and in truth, he or she will not depart from those teachings. I don't care how stubborn. I don't care how rebellious. I don't care how old they get. God says that they will not depart. If you have a child that has gone wayward or prodigal, I'm here to tell you that that child is going to return back to the Lord. And they are going to serve the, joy, the, the Lord with joy and gladness and with humility. They shall return. This is the word word of God. When they get old, they will not depart from the faith. I don't care how far they try and go. God said they will not depart. God has placed a hedge of protection around your children. God has set parameters for your children. He has set boundaries and standards that they cannot cross. I don't care how rebellious they are. God will not them, allow them to go too far out. He says when they get old even, when they grow up, they they shall not depart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My God, thank you, Jesus. I love what it says in Deuteronomy. For us parents, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and with all your soul and with all your strength. 
with everything that's in you. Parents, you must love the Lord. You can't teach your child to love God and have relationship with the Lord if you don't have one for yourself. You need a personal, intimate, up close and personal relationship with the Lord, our God. You must be in relationship. You must be in covenant with God if you want these blessings to be spread abroad over the lives of your children. Parents, make sure that you yourself are in agreement, that you yourself are in covenant, that you yourself are in relationship with the Lord, our God. My God, thank you, Lord. So you can be able to teach your children of how to have a relationship with the Lord. It says, these words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. Thank you, Father. You shall teach them diligently to your children and pressing God's precepts on their mind and penetrating their hearts with his truths. It says you shall teach them diligently to your children. You must be diligent. You must be persistent. And you must be intentional about teaching your children the word of God. You must impress it upon their hearts and implant it in their minds. Plant the seed so that when they get old, they will not depart from the faith. They will not depart from the Lord. That is our responsibilities as parents, my God. It says that you shall speak of them when you sit or in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up, you should be teaching your children about Jesus, my God. Teach them the word in your house. Teach them the word when you're walking the roads. Teach them the word when you get up in the morning. Teach them the word when you lie down at night. That is our responsibilities as parents. That's how you impress the word of God, the truth of God, the knowledge of God upon your children. That's how you plant a seed in their minds and that's how you plant a seed in their hearts. You must be diligent. You must be persistent and you must be intentional about teaching your children the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, I love this one. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. I want you tonight to sit your child down. I am challenging you to sit your children down tonight. And I want you to read Ephesians verses 1 through 3. 1 through 3 to your child tonight. Read this to your children. It says, children, obey your parents and the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives. Parents, you are representatives of Jesus Christ. You are a representative of Jesus Christ in the life of your child. So that your children must obey you. Because when you're speaking, you are not speaking of yourself. But you are speaking from the Lord. This is something I tell my daughter. What I'm telling you is instructions that God has given me to share with you. So you must obey me. Because when you don't obey me, you're not obeying God. When you don't obey me, you tell your children you are not obeying God. It's not about me slinging my weight around. It's not about me slinging my authority around. This is a commandment from the Lord. And when I speak to you, son, when I speak to you, daughter, I'm speaking to you as a representative of Jesus Christ. And you must obey the word of God that I speak to you. My God, share this with your children. It says, children honor, esteem, value as precious your father and your mother, and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise. Listen to me, I must say this again. Hallelujah, children. Honor your father and your mother and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise so that it may be well with you and that you may have a long life on this earth. I tell my daughter, and I'm going to tell again today, and you tell your children that when you obey me, when you respect me when you honor me as a representative of Jesus Christ and as your parent, your father, your mother, God says it will be well with you and that you will live a long life on this earth, that you will live a prosperous and productive life on this 
earth. You let your children know that obedience is the key to success. O obedience is the key to blessings. Obedience is the key to longevity on this earth. It doesn't matter how good of an athlete you are. It doesn't matter how well you play your instruments. If you are not obeying God, it will not be well with you, child. If you are not obeying God, you will not live a long life, a long life, a successful life, a prosperous life, a productive life on this earth. Teach your children the power and the importance of obeying you. You, parent, you are a representative of the Lord. Conduct yourself as such. Live as such. You make sure that you're being a good representative of Jesus Christ in your conduct, in your attitude, in the way that you deal with your children. Because the greater of a representative you are, the more, hum the more humble of a representative you are, the more your children will honor you and they will respect you and they will obey you. But make sure that you are being a good representative of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make sure that you are being a good representative of the Lord and remind yourself I am a representative of Christ so I must be very careful on the examples that I set before my children and how I deal with my children I must make sure that my dealings are my discipline are in alignment and in order with the word and the will of God concerning me as his representative hallelujah thank you father and now parents this one is for us verse 4 Ephesians 1, chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Verse 4 is for us parents. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor by showing favoritism to your other children, okay, or indifference to any of them, my God, but bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, my God. I must say this again. Fathers and us mothers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not exasperate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial, petty stuff, or unreasonable, or humiliating, or abusive, nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them, but bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is how we parents are to discipline and deal with our children. This is the order and the attitude and the spirit that we are to raise our children. Hallelujah. That's powerful. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Colossians 3 is another one for us parents. This is parents, we got to get this. We got we to get this. We got to get this. Fathers, do not provoke. Here we go again. Or irritate or exasperate your children with demands that are trivial or, or reasonable or humiliating or abusive. Now, this is a whole nother scripture saying the same thing. Nor by favoritism or indifference, treat them tenderly with love and kindness. Check this out. This is powerful. Parents, make sure you get this right here. So that they will not lose heart and become discouraged and unmotivated with their spirits broken. Oh, God, oh, boy, shake and not body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, it says, so that they will not lose heart and become discouraged are unmotivated with their spirits broken. Don't break your child's spirit. Don't discourage your children. Don't verbally or physically or mentally abuse your children or emotionally abuse your children or even spiritually abuse your children because that will break their spirit and they will become discouraged and they will become unmotivated and they will lose Heart, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't discourage your children. 
Don't discourage your children. Be very mindful of how you deal with your children. Remember that you are not just a parent, but that you are a representative of the Lord. And we must represent our Lord well. Amen. We must represent our Lord and Savior with the spirit of humility. We must represent Jesus well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I have a few more scriptures here for you, and then we will pray. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. A little bit about discipline. Okay? It says in Proverbs 29 and 17, correct, discipline your son, and he will give you comfort. Yes, he will delight your soul. There's nothing more challenging than an unruly child, a disrespectful child, a dis content child we must discipline our children and the way you go about discipline your child is between you and the lord seek god for strategies seek god for ways of discipline and correction concerning your child and remember what works for the neighbor's children may not work for your children therefore don't seek your neighbor therefore don't seek all your family and friends turn to the Lord and ask God for the best way to discipline your child with the spirit of love and in loving kindness and with humility not to hurt them but to help them to ask God to give you instructions on how you are to specifically discipline your child it says when you do that it will give you comfort and yes he would delight your soul when you discipline your children they grow up to be good citizens in the world they grow up to be great servants of the lord they grow up to respect the elderly they grow up to respect everybody it doesn't matter how old or how young what race when you raise them up to be respectful and you discipline your children it is for their benefit and not their detriment God says that we are to correct our children and to discipline them. And he said, if we don't, then we don't love them. That is scripture, I promise. It's in Proverbs. I can't remember specifically which one at the moment. But he says, if we do not discipline our children, then we don't love them. God himself disciplines us. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, he disciplines. So if God corrects and disciplines us, what makes you think that you're not to correct and discipline your own children? And then you wonder why they, they're reaping havoc at school. They're reaping havoc in your home. They're reaping havoc in the streets. They're undisciplined. They're unruly. We must correct and discipline our children because it's for their benefit and not their detriment. If you don't teach them, the world is going to teach them. If you don't give them discipline, the prison is going to give them discipline. They're going to have a time to go to bed, a time to wake up, a time to eat, a time to have visitors. If you don't discipline your children, the prison system will discipline them for you. Remember that. Isaiah 54 and 13, it says, And all your sons will be disciplined of the Lord, and great will be the well-being of your sons. Look at that. When your sons and your daughters are dis disciplined, they are disciples of the Lord. It say they will be disciples of the Lord, I'm sorry. And great will be the well-being of your sons. We are raising our children to be followers of Christ. That's what a disciple is, to be followers of Christ. And one day our children will grow up and be representatives as well, just like we are as parents. But it is our responsibility to teach them. And trust me, we need the wisdom of God. We need the strength and courage of God. We need the instructions of the Lord to raise our children as he has commanded us to. We cannot do it without him. You cannot do it without the Lord. And finally, I picked this scripture here, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27 through 28. It says, for this child I prayed, hallelujah, this is Hannah, and the Lord has granted me my request, which I asked of him. Therefore, I have also dedicated him to the Lord. Look at that. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord, and they worship the Lord there. Dedicate your children to the Lord. Commit them to God. Remember that your children belong to God. We are representatives and we are stewards. But God owns our children. They belong to him. Dedicate your children to God in prayer. Stop trying to carry the load and the burden and the issues that they're going through. Just dedicate all of that stuff. Give it to the Lord. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. 
I'm a parent. And I know this is always, this is not an easy thing to do for the most part. But we must keep practicing it every day. Lord, I, I give my son to you. I give my daughter to you. I give this challenge that she's facing or he's facing to you. I give it to you, Lord, because my child belongs to you. My child is your responsibility. Thank you, Father. I'm going to dedicate this child to you. And I'm going to trust you with my child. That's something that we as parents must learn to do is to trust God with our children that he has lent to us. <laughs> right. They belong to God. We have temporary custody, but God has full custody. And he has permanent custody of our children. We just share custody with God. But he has sole rights to our children. They belong to him. And this is something I'm going to work on reminding myself of on a regular basis. That my sweet girl, she belongs to the Lord. God is teaching me how to be a good representative before her. He's teaching me how to be a good steward over her. And this requires prayer and seeking of the Lord. And so parents, I just want to encourage you today as I encourage myself. Encourage you to look to the Lord for the help that you need, for the guidance that you need, for the wisdom that you need in raising your children. Our children belong to the Lord and God knows how to take care of them. God knows how to bless them. God knows how to keep them. It is our responsibility to seek God for instructions, to seek God for wisdom, to seek God for guidance and knowledge of how to properly raise our children, how to raise them in a way that is pleasing to the Lord and how to be good leaders and good stewards and good examples and good representatives for our children and most importantly for the Lord. And so I'm going to close us out in prayer. I pray that you were blessed by this word. I thank God I was able to get it in one video. I've been moving from room to room, but I, as I always say, I would not be stopped. I am not going to stop until I do what God calls me to do. And today I've done what God has called me to do, to minister to you, you parents, and to come together to pray with you and to pray for our children. So thank you, Miss Selena, for joining me. Thank you, Cheryl, for joining me. Thank you, Helen, for joining me. I've seen several of you. The names are kind of moving up, so I can't see right now, but thank you for, for staying with me for these minutes. And Miss Lily, my cousin, thank you for always supporting me. Um, Cheryl, for being patient. You've been with me since I've been switching from room to room, but you stayed on with me. So thank you so much. If you have a child that you want me to specifically pray for, you can type their name in really quickly. And I will mention their name as we pray before the Lord right now, as we get ready to go and pray before the Lord. If you have a child that needs prayer, hallelujah. Specifically, is this a specific thing that you want me to pray concerning your child? You know, put it out there. We will pray. Um, but I'm going to cover the children and cover you parents in prayer in just a few minutes. And again, I just want to thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, supporting me in ministry. This is uh, requires a lot of sacrifices, um, a lot of times before the Lord, a lot of courage. I woke up this morning. I didn't, wasn't planning on doing this this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. But I felt the need. I felt the need. And when God tells you to do something, don't delay. When God tells you to do something, don't delay. Because somebody's life could be dependent upon it. When God tells you to do something, don't delay. You speak. You speak. I see... Some names here. I see Tajma and Lamaika. Tajma and Lamaika. Thank you, Lord. Kim. Kim, keep speaking the word. Even if your child is not listening, even if your child is um seems to be turning a deaf ear, still keep speaking life into your child. Keep speaking life into your child. Keep speaking the word over your child. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I have for you, Cheryl. I have uh, for you, Miss Liz. And I have your child down here, Kim. Oh, 
Okay, I got it. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Nina, that's your child. Nina, got it. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Miss Selena, for joining us today. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Father God, we just come before you today, God, thanking you for your word that you have spoken to our hearts today, oh God. Father, thank you today for lift, lifting our countenance and encouraging us, oh God, in your word and in the faith, oh God. And as parents today, Father, we thank you right now for all that you've done for us in this hour, for all that you have revealed to us in this hour, oh God. We thank you that your word that you sent forth today did not return void, but that it accomplished everything that you sent it forth to do. Father God, as parents, we just ask for your guidance. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for you to give us knowledge, oh God, and teach us how to be better representatives as parents and as your servants, oh God, and stewards, Lord Jesus, over our children. Father, help us to be patient with them. Help us to be kind and loving towards them, oh God. Father, help us to speak words of life, oh God, and exhortation and wisdom into their lives, oh God. Father, help us to not discourage our children. Help us to not break their spirits, oh God. Even when we're frustrated, oh God, we're tired and we're worn and we're weary during the times when they are rebellious and obstinate, oh God, and disobedient and disrespectful. Father, you help us to be tempered in all things. Father, you help us to remain humble and faithful, oh God. Father, you help us, Lord Jesus, to speak, oh God, with the right attitude, to speak the right words, oh God, and to speak, oh God, with the spirit of meekness and from a place of love concerning our children. Father, we cannot do this without you. We cannot parent our children without your instructions, without your wisdom, without your grace, without your mercy, without your knowledge. But Father, we thank you that you have given us instructions, that you have given us knowledge, and you have given us wisdom and truth in your word. Father, help us to look to you. Help us to look to your word, O oh God, for all the guidance we need, O oh God, to be good representatives of you and to our children, to be good stewards, to be good parents. Father, help us to lead and to live by examples before our children, O oh God. Father, help us to be the best parents we can be through you and in you, and for you, and for them, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now for this word that you've given us today. It has lifted our countenance and lifted our spirit, man, on today, O oh God. Father, we thank you that you are with us and that you are for us to guide us and to keep us in all of our ways, O oh God. And Father, we just thank you right now that we, O oh God, will thrive as parents because you are with us, O oh God, and you will not leave our side. You will never forsake us, O oh God, and you will never forget about us. So we thank you. And Father, today we just lend, we just, we just, oh God, lift our children up to you. And Father God, we give them back to you, Father. You have total control in the lives of our children. And so, Father, we give our children to you. We lift them up to you, for they belong to you. Father, as parents, we just ask that you just continue to speak to our hearts every single day concerning our children. Father, we trust you with them. And we know that they are in your hands. And so we thank you right now, oh God, for covering them. We thank you for caring for them. And we thank you for keeping them, protecting them, preserving them, and providing for our children. We thank you that you are here with us as parents and that you will order our steps every single step of the way. Father, we lift up our children to you right now. We lift them up, Father. And we thank you that you have a hedge of protection around our children. We thank you that no weapon formed against our children is going to prosper. We thank you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord God lift up a standard against him. Father, we thank you that our children are tucked under your wings of safety and protection. Father, we thank you that you are upholding our children with the right hand of your righteousness. Father, we just ask right now, oh God, that you would speak to the heart and minds of our children right now. And Father, that you, oh God, will cause them to walk in the plan and purpose that you have ordained for their lives. Father, help us to continue to impart your word, O oh God, into the mind and heart, to impress your word into the heart and minds of our children, O oh God. Father, we ask right now, O oh God, that even during this time of pandemic, 
during these many times of uncertainties that they can be certain of you, who you are in their lives, Father God, what you have said concerning them in your word. Father, remind our children today that they are the works of your hands, that they are a masterpiece, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they are unique, that they are peculiar, that they are distinguished people, oh God, remind our children that they were created, my God, to stand out and not fit in, that they are the light of this world, that they are like cities that are set upon a hill, that they cannot, they shall not, and they will not be hid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come against the spirit of disobedience in our children. Our boys shed our by shy. Father, we come against the spirit of rebellion. We come against the spirit of disrespect, oh God, and obstinate, obstinate and proud and pride, oh God. Father, we cast down every demonic attack. We cast down every demonic spirit that's trying to attach itself to, to our children. Father, we cast down every stronghold, every imagination, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge, against the wisdom, against the word, the ways, the works, and the truth of God concerning their lives. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come right now and we speak against the enemy that we let him know that we are going to stand against his wiles. We are going to stand against his attacks, oh God, against our children. Father, we declare your word over our children. We decree what you have declared already concerning our children. Father, we speak words of life over our children right now. We speak words of wisdom over our children right now. Father, for every child who has gone prodigal, for every child who has gone wayward, Father, I call that child back home right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For every child who's struggling with peer pressure, for every child who's having an identity crisis, abortion, da 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 ba sha ta ba Father, let them know who they are in you, O oh God. Remind them that they are your child, O oh God. Father, I come against the spirit of confusion that's trying to attack the mind of our children. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will renew them through the spirit of their minds. That their mind that is in Christ Jesus will also resonate, reign, and rule in our children right now, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I come against the spirit of bullying. It will not come now upon our children. They will not walk in fear. I mind my share. They bear share tie by. But they will walk in faith. They will walk in truth. They will walk in obedience. They will walk in your word, oh God. They will walk in victory, oh God. For victory belongs to our children. Father, I come right now, oh God, I buy shot against the spirit of suicide. I come against the spirit of anxiety, oh God. That's true trying to consume the mind of our children. They shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living for you have not given them over to the spirit nor the hand of death. Our children will rise up. They will take up their beds and they will walk. Oh God, I buy shake and they buy shake. They will walk in your purpose. They will walk in your word. They will walk in your will and they will walk in the plan of God concerning their lives. Father, I pray for every child right now who's being abused and discouraged, whose spirit has been broken. Father, I pray right now that you, oh God, will lift up their heads, that you, oh God, will lift up their countenance that you, oh God, will encourage their spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for every child that's missing right now, God, or by shit. Those who have been adopted, my God. Those who are being going through sex trafficking right now. Father, bring those children back home, my God. Father, rescue those children. Deliver them from the hand of the pedophile. Deliver them from sexual predators, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, deliver them from drug addiction. Father, deliver them from, oh God, any type of sexual immorality. Father, 
we come today and we ask that you, oh God, will deliver our children. Father, those children right now at St. Jude, oh Moshin Dabai, those children at Eggerson Hospital, oh God, those children at Children Health Care of Atlanta, there's those children that are sick in the hospital bed, those children that are battling some form of cancer, some man of sickness and disease. Father, cause them to rise up, take up their beds and walk in healing right now, God, to walk in deliverance and healing, to walk in victory right now in the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread, oh God. Father, we declare and we decree, oh God, under the authority of the Holy Spirit and by your word, I buy, and by your stripes, oh God, that they are healed, my God, my God. Cause them to rise up, my God, oh Moshin in this day right now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, raise them up, oh God, raise up this generation, oh God, give them the courage, oh God, to take this gospel, oh God, to the four corners of the earth. Father, we thank you right now for healing. We thank you right now for deliverance. Father, I pray for the unsaved teenager. I pray for the teenager who does not know you, God. I pray right now that they will hear the gospel message and that they will receive the gift of salvation and that you, oh God, will pour out your spirit, oh God, upon all flesh as you have already declared in your word. Pour it out upon our children right now. You said that our sons and daughters are going to prophesy, my God, that you are going to give them dream and vision. Father, fill our children right now, oh God, with dreams and vision. And Father, fill them with your Holy Spirit, I buy. Let them have an overflow of your spirit, oh God. Fill them to their cups. Run over, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now. I pray right now for Nina Jones, oh God. Oh boy, shen da ba ba she. Father, I pray for sweet Nina, my God, that you will open up her ears to hear your word through her representative, oh God, her mother, that she will incline her ears to the words and the wisdom and instructions that you give her mother Kim to share with her. Father, I decree that from this day forward that Nina will listen and she she will learn and she will be obedient, oh God, and she will respond to your word, my God. She will respond to the words of her mother. She will respond with respect. She will respond with joy and meekness. She will respond in obedience, oh God, and faithfulness to you. Father, at your word, everything must fall subject. Nina will fall subject to your words and your precepts and your commands and instructions that you speak through the mouth of her mother, your servant, your representative. Father, I count it done by faith. I thank you for the quick turnaround. I thank you for the results that Kim is going to see in her daughter Nina in advance. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor for what you're doing in Nina's life and in her relationship with her mother and in this family, oh God. We count it all done by faith, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now for Tajma, oh God, and Lee Michael, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, that whatever they stand in need of, God, that you will meet that need, oh God, that you, oh God, will touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, oh God. I declare restoration. I declare healing. I declare deliverance, oh God, in their life, Lord Jesus. I thank you, oh God, that their prayers of their parents and their prayers of their grandmother, Miss Liz, have already been answered, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for the manifestation of your prayers and your promises and your word that's going to come forth concerning Tajma and Lee Le Michael, oh God. Father, we rejoice right now for the victory that they have in you. Father, we rejoice right now that the prayers of the righteous avails much. 
Father, we rejoice right now that you have already inclined your ears to the prayers that have gone forth for Tajma and Lee Michael, oh God. Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for the manifestation. We thank you right now, oh God, for the revelation, oh God. Father, we thank you right now from the visitation from the Lord that they shall receive, oh God. We praise your name right now, Heavenly Father. We give you the glory for it right now, God. And we count it done by faith. And Father, we pray for Quandale Cobb. Hallelujah. Father, let your angels continue to and always can camp around about him, oh God. Father, we thank you right now that no weapon formed against Quandale Cobb shall ever prosper. Father, we thank you right now that you have put a hedge of protection around his life. And Father, I decree that he's going to do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree, oh God, that he will prosper and you will add longevity to his life. Father, I decree that he will walk in obedience, that he will walk in purpose, that he will walk in faith, oh God. And Father, I decree that the plan that you have for his life, oh God, is going to come forth, forth in great power. Father, continue to order his steps, oh God. Direct his path, oh God. Lead him in the way that you will have him to go. And Father, may he follow you. May he look to you. May he seek you and serve you all the days of his life, oh God. We thank you for Quandale, oh God. We thank you for who you are in his life and all that you are going to do concerning him. We thank you right now for it, God. So Father, we just bless your name. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of our children. Hallelujah. That none of them will be lost and that none of them will lack. For you are with our children. And you have promised to bless the fruit of our womb. Children are a reward from you. They are an inheritance from the Lord. And Father, we thank you for your reward. We thank you for our children. And we thank you for the plan and the purpose and the promises that you have made concerning their lives. We thank you that our children are the head and not the tail. We thank you that our children are above and not beneath. We thank you that they are blessed in the cities and they are blessed in the field. That you're going to bless them going in and you're going to bless them coming out. That you're going to protect them from the pandemic, oh God. You're going to bless them during this time of adjusting to school, oh God. Father, when they go to school, oh God, we thank you that they have favor with you and that they will have favor with man and that our children will excel and they will thrive academically. They will thrive spiritually. They will thrive socially. They will thrive individually. Oh God, they will thrive in you. Our children will grow up and they will not depart from your faith. They will not depart from your presence. They will not depart from your word, your will, and your ways concerning their lives. We thank you now, God, that you have received our prayers and we count them all done by faith. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me. God bless you. And remember to keep a careful watch on your children. And to be a good representative of the Lord concerning your children. Pray for them. Teach them his word. And guide them and train them and the adoration and instructions of the Lord. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you again soon.